Today's scripture reading is from Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34. Again, that is Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34. Welcome to virtual service at Riverside Community Church. We are a community committed to equipping you to grow as a follower of Jesus. We're glad that you are joining us. Let us know in the comments section that you are here and say hi to your fellow worshipers. God has great plans for you and we are excited for how he will use this message in your life. Please like and share this sermon so that your family and friends can be empowered to grow in Jesus as well. Please join me in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come here and to be joined together either in person or virtually and we ask that you would be equipping and empowering us this as we do this to interact with your scripture to interact with your holy spirit to listen to the direction that your holy spirit is giving us lord equip us and empower us to trust you to a greater extent than we've ever trusted you before God, I pray that you would be working in us, that you would be defeating our fears and our anxieties, that we would truly be people characterized by deep and genuine faith that manifests itself as trusting you in all things. Lord, give us compassion and clarity. Give me compassion and clarity as I present this message that you would be honored and glorified, that your people would be blessed and encouraged and built up. For your name, your glory, your kingdom, and our good. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to be careful how I address our topic for this message. It would be easy to talk in the extremes about this subject, about this topic that we're going to be wrestling with. However, my desire is to compassionately present Jesus as the primary solution to a complex predicament that many of us struggle with. That predicament that I'm mentioning is anxiety. 18.1% of adults suffer from clinical anxiety. 25.1% of children between the ages of 13 and 18 suffer from anxiety. And that's clinical anxiety. That's not even talking about the stress that we encounter and that so few of us really know how to deal with. The church as a whole has historically mishandled this topic. They are either dismissive of people who have anxiety as not having enough faith, or in more recent years, some have transitioned to treating anxiety as purely physiological. 
as a purely physiological problem that doesn't have spiritual intersections and implications. So please understand that my priorities and bringing this message is to faithfully represent scripture, to present practical guidance, and to equip you to walk in freedom rather than guilt and shame. With those goals in mind, turn with me to Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34. In this passage, Jesus gives us some instruction regarding anxiety. Now, in any passage, the tone that we read into a passage will influence our understanding of that passage. For example, if we were to read this passage with a monotone or aggressive nature, we might lead, we might be led to believe that Jesus is going on the attack, that he is approaching this subject with frustration and anger. However, the more that I read this passage and the context around it, the more that I pick up on Jesus's loving, compassionate instruction. He wants the best for us. God has made you in his image and he has paid the price to save you and adopt you into his family through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. Keep that depth of love, the depth of Christ's sacrifice in your mind as we read Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34. And he said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn. And yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his life span? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has not designed us for a life of anxiety. Anxiety is the result of living in a broken and sinful world. We have sinned and others have sinned against us, 
disrupting the paradise that God created for us to live in. So our bodies and brains do not properly process threats, consequences, or even God's own benevolent love towards us the way that they ought to. And as a result, we turn to anxiety and fretting rather than turning to God. For some of us, anxiety is hardwired into our brain and physiology more than it is for others. Worrying is a habit that can be taught and passed down through generations, and it often is. This is something that I am working very diligently to break in my life and the life of my family so that I don't pass it on to my children. Instead, I want to pass on the opposite of anxiety. I want to teach my boys to trust God so much that even in the darkest times, they have hope. And I want that for you too. I want you to live lives characterized by trusting God, characterized by hope, by faith in his work and his promises. Trust is the opposite of anxiety. Trust doesn't come easy because we have been let down by people in our lives. Often the people that we think we should most be able to trust. And we have probably in at least some way or another perceived that God has let us down. Now I don't mean that God has actually let us down or failed us, but rather our finite minds cannot always see what God is doing, and we cannot always see the good he is bringing to us through difficult circumstances. In verse 22, Jesus told his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. I should make this clarification. Jesus is not saying, don't care about your life. Don't make wise decisions with your food. Don't dress nicely or don't work hard or don't enjoy nice things. Instead, Jesus is saying, don't be anxious. Shortly before developing this section of the sermon, I noticed that the shirt I was wearing on Monday had quite a bit of a stretched neck, and it was one of my favorite shirts. My brain went down the rabbit hole towards anxiety. What if someone sees me? What if they dismiss me because they think I look frumpy? Well, well now I need to donate... Um, the shirt to the place that makes mops out of old clothes. Oh no, I've donated too many shirts recently, and the ones that I have that are in good shape, a lot of them don't look good on me. Now I'm going to need to buy new shirts. What am I going to do? I don't want to spend money on that. I was giving in to anxiety, and my brain was going crazy. I had to tell my brain to stop, that God has not once let me go without clothing, and that he will continue to provide for me. Think of a time when you have experienced the kind of anxiety of going without. Maybe you were afraid that you would go without food, or maybe you were afraid that you would be unable to get around or pay your bills. Or perhaps you went down the rabbit hole of being scared that if you created healthy boundaries for you and your family, that the consequences would be unbearable. Jesus used fears that 
he knew his disciples would struggle with. And then he transitioned them from fears to a place of faith in verses 23 and 24. There he says, For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? You are more valuable than the birds. God has given you so much more than the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. God is the owner of all things, and he loves you. He meets our needs. God is trustworthy in this life and the next. Life may not always be sunshine and rainbows, but God is always faithful. He takes care of our needs and he has made a way for us to live with him for eternity. If he has done that, why wouldn't he be trustworthy to take care of us in this life? God is the only one who will truly never fail us. In addition to God's faithfulness, what do we think that we will accomplish through anxiety? Anxiety doesn't lead to good planning or a longer life. Anxiety leads to fear and ultimately death. And we see this in verses 25 through 31, that anxiety cannot help us. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and thrown into the fire, the oven tomorrow, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried for all the nations of the world. Seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Anxiety is not healthy for us. Fear is not helpful. God has called you and me to trust him. And the evidence of our trust is faith driving fear and anxiety out of our hearts, out of our minds, out of our lives. We each grow and improve in trusting God at different rates, like every aspect of our lives and every spiritual discipline. Some of us will be ahead in one area and some will be ahead in another area and we don't all grow at the same rate in every area of our lives. This is not an excuse to stay in our anxiety or not to trust God, refusing to grow. Rather, it's a call to give yourself and others grace when you have not reached the place of maturity that you wish to be at and that you know God is calling you towards. As Christians, there are times when we focus more on the sin that God has forgiven us than the condition God says that we are currently in. Beating yourself up for sin, your sins and your shortcomings only 
induces greater anxiety. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If God is not condemning us, then we do not need to condemn ourselves. Condemning ourselves and living lives of anxiety are not helpful. Some of us require a mixture of Christian counseling and even medicine to help us fight against the effects, the anxiety-inducing effects of living in a sinful world and the impact that that has on our physiology. Now, I want to be clear, medicine is not an end in itself. Christi Christians may use medicine, but it should not be a replacement for pursuing healing in Christ. Instead, it is something that works in parallel, dealing with the impact that sin has had on our minds and on our brains. We don't fully understand what God is helping us to overcome as he walks us through defeating anxiety. And we, we don't know all the things that he has brought us through. We definitely don't know or understand what other people are overcoming in their fights against anxiety, their fight to grow in Christ. The appropriate reaction to anxiety is not working harder or trying to believe better, but the appropriate reaction to anxiety is to pursue a relationship with God where we are so confident in his love for us that we don't fear what the world can do to us or deprive us of. We are seeking God and his kingdom. God's treatment of us reminds me of my relationship with my boys. Even when they are mad at me or embarrassed about something foolish that they have done, they still have so much confidence in my love for them and my desire to protect them that they will still snuggle up and bury their face in my shoulder. That's so similar to God. He is the one who takes care of us. And even when we are worried, even when we feel like we have failed in some way, shape, or form to fully trust him, he is our ultimate comforter. He is the provider of ultimate satisfaction through Jesus. Jesus is the one who provides for our needs. God loves us more than the birds of the air and the grass of the field. He loves us so much more than we could possibly imagine. Just look at verse 32 as it confirms God's love for us. Fear not little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God enjoys giving us his kingdom. It is his good pleasure to share with us, to spoil us, to give us things that we don't deserve. As earthly parents, we can get a glimpse into God's joy when he when we get to bless the children in our lives. Blessing our children is not merely the right thing to do or an obligation. It is a joy. It is a pleasure to care for and bless our children. Even though there are sometimes some rough spots. Next, in verse 33, Jesus gives his disciples some pretty intimidating commands. 
he says, sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. When God calls us to be generous, it is simultaneously a call to trust that he will provide despite our generosity, despite our giving away. This is true when he calls us to bless someone in a way that draws us out of our comfort zones. It's also true as he calls us to tithe. The concept of tithing is one we see taught throughout the Old Testament. It is to give 10% of our first fruits of our income back to God. Tithing is an act of faith. It's a way we say, God, I trust you to be my provider. Also, in serving the church and those around us through generosity, we are working towards eternal rewards in God's kingdom that Jesus teaches us are far more valuable and will last forever. With a mind towards eternal rewards, Jesus concludes this section of scripture in verse 34 by saying, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When our greatest treasures are earthly treasures, then we are partaking in idolatry. We are worshiping something other God. We are finding our satisfaction in something other than the God who created us to be in relationship with him. Or we are trusting in something else as a savior, trusting something other than God to functionally save us from our difficulties, from our problems. All of those things are forms of idolatry. However, our treasure should be in Jesus and his kingdom because he is our only true savior. He is God eternal. He left the comforts of heaven and took on human flesh as the man Christ Jesus. He lived the perfect and sinless life that we haven't lived. He died the death on the cross that you and I deserve to die, suffering and experiencing the righteous wrath of God in our place. He was buried and he rose again, showing that he has the power to defeat Satan's sin and death. Jesus has saved us and offered for us to be his co-heirs, co-heirs with him in the kingdom of God if our faith is in his sacrifice. It is trust in his sacrifice for us that equips us to trust that he will take care of us, that he will take care of our needs when we don't see a way for our needs to be taken care of. It is that trust in God that equips us and empowers us to walk in faith and reject a life of anxiety. Like every other aspect of our walk with Christ, our defeat of anxiety in Christ is rarely ever instantaneous. However, the abundant life that Jesus has gifted us is one free from anxiety. Now is our time to strive for trust in God, to walk 
in God's provision and in his peace. Philippians 4, 5b through 7 summarizes well this passage and what God is calling us to. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Bring your prayers and your supplications to God. Bring your gratitude and thanksgiving to him. And allow him to work in your hearts and your minds, guarding you in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for loving us, for welcoming us into your kingdom as co-heirs with Christ. Lord, we ask that you would be equipping us and empowering us to trust you, to place our faith in you in ways that we haven't before. Lord, drive anxiety out of our lives through faith in you. Equip us and empower us to trust every one of your promises, including that if we are seeking the kingdom of God, your kingdom, that all our needs will be met. Equip us and empower us to trust you in the good times, in the hard times. And in the times when we just don't know what to do. Because you are trustworthy and you are God and you love us and you have saved us. You are our one true Savior. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the glory of God the Father. As you go about your week, choose faith and pursue trusting in God and his faithfulness towards us through Christ. Go in peace. I love prayer. It's a great way for us to connect with God and each other. So I want to invite you to Fridays at 4.30 p.m. to join us in worshiping God through prayer, joining one another, and it has been a wonderful opportunity to get to know each other and to see God answer prayer, to praise him and thank him for the way that he has been answering prayers. I can't wait to see you Fridays at 4.30 p.m. We'll be doing that via Zoom. One of the ways that we respond to God's love and generosity is by giving back a portion of what he has given us to support the local church ministry. Um, I want to encourage you and thank you because God has been doing great and amazing things in and through you, in and through our church here at Riverside Community to bless Hammond and Northwest Indiana. We have been seeing people growing in their faith. Many people are encountering the scripture through our weekly preaching. We are seeing people prayed for and prayers answered. And we are also seeing that um, people are being fed and cared for through our blessing boxes that we have in partnership with the Northwest Indiana Helping Hands. And so I would ask you to prayerfully consider how is God calling you to help support this ministry that we are a part of? 
there are three ways that we can give. We can give online through Facebook. We can send in our tithes and offerings through the mail, and we can also place our tithes and offerings and the offering plate at the back of service. So I look forward to seeing you, and I look forward to seeing how God is going to work and bless Hammond in Northwest Indiana through you and through his generosity through you. Thank you again. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Please let us know in the comments section that you were here, that you joined us. Also, let us know how we can be praying for you and how we can be of service to you, helping you grow in your relationship with Christ. If you were blessed by this message, please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe or follow us so that you don't miss out on any other great content that we put out. It would really be a blessing to us as, and we want to be a blessing to you.